If you are preparing for interviews and plan to use the following products, make sure to use the coupon Rachit to enjoy a discount as well as support this channel. Today we will be solving a problem from Code Chef Me Challenge and if I have written over here if you can solve this yourself, it means you can crack Google coding interviews which is nothing but a fancy way of saying uh, if you can solve this problem yourself, it means you are really good at problem solving skills and you can actually really crack interviews like a boss and if you really couldn't solve this problem on your own, I would say like how it follows in gym, no pain, no gain. Similar is with competitive programming or your data structure and algorithm skills. All right, so there were eight problems in Coach Chef's May Challenge and today we will be talking about the Chef and Bitwise product which only had 433 submissions. You can see that it's really low as compared to around 18,000 submissions for the first one. And then it gradually drops because the problem difficulty increases, but there is a huge drop at 433 from 18,000 all the way over here. And the accuracy is also very, very less. What makes this problem so difficult? You are given two integers X and Y, which can be as high up to a trillion, which is 10 to the power 12. And you have to find z that maximizes f of x y z if there are multiple values for z you have to choose the smallest one f of x y z is nothing but the product of x and y but before doing the product we perform an and operation with both x and y with z so for example for 5 and 12 this is how the and will look like you will get a 4 and the reason for that is you perform the and operation on individual bits and and only results in 1 if both of the bits are turned to 1 as in this case all the remaining bits will be 0 so this is how and is performed and if I take get, like basically take an example let's say x is 7 y is 12 and the answer for z will be 15 because that's is that is the value of z which produces maxima it will be the value 84 and um, how it's working is 7 and 15 is also 7 12 and 15 is also 12 and their product is 84 and it's the maximum value that this function can achieve. One thing to note over here is that the maximum value that you can get out of f is nothing but x into y. It is the product of x and y. And why is that? Because when you perform an AND operation on some let's say number x, it will always be less than or equal to x. In our case, we can always choose z as 11111. So all the bits are 1 and z which makes us achieve the maximum value of x and y right the product x and y is achievable if all the bits in z are turned to 1 then what is the problem over here there is a surprise we are also given two integers l and r which can again be as high as a trillion and now z has to follow the constraint that it should lie in the range l to r okay so it's an integer in the range l to r now this makes us like really it becomes difficult because we have to iterate on a trillion range like L can be 0, R can be trillion, so you have to trade on all the numbers, plug in the value of Z and F and find the one which gives us maxima. Not only that, if I will look at the bigger picture, this is what the problem is saying. I am given four integers, X, Y and L and R. Now X and Y are directly associated with the function and for L and R it's nothing but the range that Z has to follow while it maximizes F of X, Y, Z and also if there are multiple answers, the smallest Z wins. We also have to do this for 10 to the power 5 test cases and in each iteration, I mean for each test case, we cannot iterate on a trillion range for the choices of Z. It's not possible because we have a time limit of one second which is combined over all test cases and that's what makes this problem so difficult. Each test case needs to be solved in order 1 or log n time. And now I really encourage you to take a pause but this is how I proceeded and solved this problem. I'm, I'm sure you are absolutely going to love this and it really will open your mind to be a good and better problem solver. So please leave aside everything, sit tight and enjoy this video. Now you are having L and R, okay, which can be up to a trillion. So first I wrote them in a random fashion, like what they can be, how would they look like? And I realized you will at max need 40 bits to convert the entire range. I mean, any number from zero to trillion can be represented by 40 bits because 2 to the power 40 is greater than 10 to the power 12. Now how can I say that L and R, uh, I mean how can I say R is greater than L? 
Well, I compare the first bid positions. Are they different? No. What about the next? What about the next? I keep on doing that until I find the first position, which I'm calling the kth bit. And that's the first place where L and R differ. And I can say for sure that since L is smaller than R, it will have a zero at that position, right? Now, no matter what happens in this area, what zero ones permutations is happening in this and this area, it cannot change the fact that R is always be going to greater than L. And I'm going to exploit this property. The idea is to save time and not iterate on all the choices from L to R. We will pick smartly and only test the Z value for that. So what I'm doing is all the valid candidates for Z are the numbers from L to R. Now I'm putting them into two categories, Z1 and Z2. What are they? They are simple, like this is the kth position and all the numbers in the range L to R which have zero at the kth bit, I'm clubbing them or I'm grouping them in Z1 and all the numbers in the range L2 are with a one at the kth bit, I'm grouping them into Z2, okay? Now, no matter whatever comes in this range, whatever zero ones combinations are coming in this range, I can always say that Z1 is the category which will always be less than R. And it's simple because at the kth bit, I know they are having zero while R is having a one. Make sense? For Z2, similarly, I can say, all the numbers will be greater than L in this category because we are having a one at the kth bit while L is having a zero. So look at the bigger side. We are having Z1 and Z2. We have already ensured the partial constraint, like for one category, we have ensured one side of the limit, but we have to ensure the other side as well. For Z1, the Z1 bucket should worry about being greater than L, right? If we ensure that, now we know that the Z1 category is less than R and greater than L. So now we can focus on maximizing our function f of x, y, z. The idea is that, and we will dive into more details. So I'll ask you, how can Z1 bucket make sure that it's greater than L? Well, you have choices. You have to select a bit, let's call that small l. It should be zero in capital L, and you can t set it to one for Z1. So this will be the first bit, which is, uh, different in Z1 as compared to L. And they are the first bit which is different and as well as at that time, we know that it's a one for Z1, whereas it's zero in L. It automatically ensures that Z1 is now less than R and at the same time it's greater than L, right? All the following bits after a small L, they can be anything. So L plus one, L plus two, up to 39, they can be anything now. And I will fill them in the fashion that I will, f I mean, I will fill them greedily so that I maximize my function f of x by z. So this is the whole idea. Similarly, you will do for z2. Z2 is already greater than L, greater than L. To ensure that it's less than R, you have to iterate on some positions where it's a one in R and you set it to zero for z2. And, and again, the remaining bits, they can be anything now because we have ensured that z is again in the range of capital L to R. So that's the whole idea and we will see examples what this really means. So I'm going to solve this for Z1 and L and you can do that similarly for Z2 and R. So the similar discussions can be extended for R and Z2. So let's focus on L and Z1 for the time. And we know that L looks like this. In Z1 at the kth bit, we have a zero. So till point, we have no difference in the binary representation of L and Z1. Like all the first four bits in this case, we can see they are same. Now, how can we make sure that Z1 is greater than L? As I've said, you pick some bit position, which is a zero in L. So this is one valid choice. This is another valid choice. So you select any of these and basically L will iterate on each of these bit positions where it's a zero. And we have to keep in mind, we have to maximize F of X, Y, Z, but at the same time, the numbers in Z should, in the, should be in the range L to R. So in each iteration, we will set this lth bit to one in Z1, which will ensure that particular constraint. And now I can focus on maximizing our function f of x, y, z. To do that, I will put one in all the remaining bits after L. Why? As we have seen, Z is basically in, is taking part in performing AND with both x and y. And if it's having all bits as one, we know that it will contribute really a lot in ensuring x and y are maximized. And since X and Y are getting maximized, their overall product will also get maximized. So that's the whole idea. And the other thing to consider is 
if let's say for some bit in this case I'm taking an example if let's say the 23rd bit is 0 in both x and y do you think it makes sense for z to have a 1 over there because if you have a 1 but both bits are 0 in x and y well when you perform the AND the 23rd bit in the resultant for both x and y will stay to 0 so it's not magnifying our answer so we should keep that bit as 0 in z as well because we remember that in case of multiple answers we have to pick the smallest z value and that's the overall idea now again walking through an example this is what we are doing we are having these two bits where l is having a 0 so l is going to iterate on that in each iteration we set that corresponding bit to 1 right and now in all the remaining bit positions we can put 1 because I'm focusing on maximizing our function f of xyz whenever I put 1 in z it helps both x and y to receive a 1 in the resultant bit as well and therefore I'm trying to maximize my both x and y values so that I mean when I'm saying maximize x and y values it's not that we can get something bigger than x but the intent is to maximize x and z as a particular result and similarly the idea is to also maximize the value of y and z the and operation basically always reduces the number so we are going to get something less than or equal to x and less than or equal to y that's the whole idea I'm putting once in z so that it helps both x and y to stay at the maximum value but at the same time if both x and y are having some bit as 0 I can keep that bit as 0 in z also because it does not maximize my answer it does not in fact changes the answer so I will also ensure that I am keeping my z value as small as possible because in case of multiple answers I really want to pick the smallest z now this L can iterate at max over 40 minus k zero positions in L right because the first k bits we have seen like they are set for z1 and the remaining bits we are iterating on those positions where L is having a zero so at max we know that there were 40 bits in L so in worst case actually you can iterate on 40 bit positions like I'm giving you a really good limit but that's also very small like from a trillion numbers you came down to just 40 numbers you can easily compare that and you can pick the z which gives you the maxima right so just 40 numbers that you have uh, for the case of z1 and l and again the remaining 40 numbers can come from z2 and r comparison and I'll walk you through the code just to give you a better idea so first finding the kth bit which was nothing but the first bit where l and r differ so I initialize k to 0 and perform a while loop wherein I'm checking till the L and R are having the same kth bit just increment k so when this while loop will break I know that k is pointing to that bit where L is a 0 and R is having 1 now I'm I'm having this code for uh, Z1 and L you can similarly do that for Z2 and R but the idea is to uh, iterate on the remaining k plus 1 to 40 bits and uh, I'm trying to find those bits where L is having 0 at the, its bit position and uh, I have to make sure that Z1 is greater than L so whenever uh, L is having a 0 in its bit I'm setting that particular bit to 1 and I have ensured that Z is now in the range L to R now for the remaining bits I am focusing on my target which is to maximize F of XYZ so I'm iterating from L plus 1 to 40 and uh, again 40 is because the trillion numbers can at max need 40 bits to represent in binary right so now what I'm doing is for the remaining bits if X and Y they both are having 0 bit at this position there is no need to actually set it to 1 for Z1 okay so and in this case I'm saying that Z1 hey set your bit to 0 okay otherwise I know that I have to worry about maximizing my function f of XYZ and that's why I'm saying hey Z1 please set your bit to 1 when I have set all the bits for Z1 I'm going below and checking the value of f of x y and z1 and if it's greater than my current max well I have actually found a better z value congrats so I will just store that and that's all guys I really hope you enjoyed this video this problem was really good to solve on your own I really I really loved solving this and the implementation was also very fun this was a pseudocode implementation so I really encourage you to solve it on your own and get this accepted but if you want a uh, real source code you can check my github for more again guys if you are preparing for interviews and using these products make sure to use the coupon rachit to enjoy the discount and um, these are my social media handles at the rate rachit on both instagram and twitter so 
if you want to connect make sure to follow me there and the announcement is about the winners of previous Google FUBAR referrals congratulations to Tuli404 and Sanyam Singlas I am sure they loved doing the Google FUBAR challenge I'll see you in the next one guys please if you like the video hit the like button share this and hit that big fat red button and subscribe thanks a lot guys and happy coding I'll see you in the next one